What's up guys, Matsugal Films here. Welcome back to another ranking video. Today, I will be ranking the top 10 LEGO Star Wars sets of 2023. We have obviously 10 sets on the official list as well as four honorable mentions. So with that being said, let's just get right on into the list. All right, so starting with the honorable mentions, we have four of them and they aren't ranked in any particular order. These are just sets that I think deserve a mention because they're good enough to deserve a mention, but they don't actually deserve a spot on the list. Starting with probably the least worthy honorable mention, we have the Coruscant Guard Gunship. This set could have been amazing and it's really sad that I can't put it in my top five. It's just not a good set. The minifigures, at least the clone troopers, aren't good at all. The actual build could have been better. I just don't really like this set, but since it is a gunship, I just wanted to give it a quick mention on this list. Next up, we have the spider tank set. This set is really just on here because it came with the best minifigure of 2023, which if you haven't seen that video yet, go check it out. But Bo-Katan was a really good minifigure, probably the best one that we've gotten this year, as I said. And besides that, this set is pretty forgettable though, but again, it does include great minifigures, so I think it did deserve a mention on the list. Next up, we have the UCS X-Wing Starfighter. This was a big improvement over the previous UCS X-Wing Starfighter that we've gotten. However, it really isn't anything too special. It's just a UCS X-Wing. That Luke Skywalker minifigure, is really good in this set but besides that i think again it's the ucs x-wing i think it deserves a mention because it is a good ucs set but it's not anything too special and then finally we have the captain rex helmet set this set was good i love the idea of lego doing clone trooper helmet sets however I don't think the execution was there i don't really like the way that lego designed this helmet it just looks kind of weird. I don't really see how else they could have done it, but I just am not a fan of the way that this helmet looks. But I think it is a cool idea, and I think that the way LEGO built it isn't really necessarily bad. Just not a huge fan of the way that this is designed. All right, now moving into our top 10, starting with number 10, we have the 501st Clone Troopers Battle Pack. This wouldn't be a LEGO Star Wars top 10 list without at least one battle pack. And this was definitely the better of the two battle packs that came out this year. The 501st Officer minifigure definitely leaves a lot to be desired, which is why this set isn't higher on the list. However, I really do like the Clone Specialist minifigure and the two 501st Heavy Troopers. I think both of those minifigures are really good. And I also like the mini AV-7 turret build in this battle pack. I think it's pretty cool. Next up at number nine, we have the best LEGO Star Wars helmet set of the year. We have the Commander Cody helmet. This set is pretty good. It is, in my opinion, the better of the two clone helmet sets that we've gotten. I think the phase one helmet just looks better in this design. I think the phase two helmet was definitely harder to design in Lego and that shows because the phase two helmet doesn't look as good as the phase one helmet in my opinion. Even though in universe, I probably prefer the phase two helmet. I just think that the way Lego designed the phase two helmet just doesn't look as good as the way that they designed the phase one helmet. So Commander Cody, does get the slight edge over Captain Rex in the helmet sets. Next up at number eight, we have, in my opinion, an underrated set, the Yavin 4 Rebel Base. This set is pretty good. It has its flaws for sure. That's why it's not higher on the list. However, the 12 minifigures is absolutely insane in this set. The amount of play features that you get, it doesn't look too accurate. The tree obviously is pretty controversial. And so again, this set isn't perfect, but I do think that it deserves a spot on this list at number eight. Next up at number seven, we have Ahsoka Tano's T6 Jedi Shuttle. 
This set could have been higher. However, I think the $80 price point is just a little bit too much for this set. I think $60 or even $70 would have been much better, but I think that $80 is a little bit much. You're only getting four minifigures in this set, and the build itself isn't too big. So again, I think the set itself is good and it could have been higher on the list. However, I think that $80 is just a little bit too much, so it is a little bit overpriced. Next up, at number six, we have the Mandalorian Fang Fighter versus TIE Interceptor. I think that this TIE Interceptor build carries this set to the number six spot because I don't really like the Mandalorian Fang Fighter build. I think it could have been better. Now we didn't actually see the Mandalorian Fang Fighter in the Mandalorian season three. So maybe it could have been better if I actually knew that this build was accurate. However, Mandalorian Fang Fighter that I know does have the spinning wings. And so Lego did not add that feature. So again, I'm not sure if this set is accurate or not, but in my mind it isn't. And I think for many figures, they could have done better with that for a hundred dollars. But again, that tie interceptor is just so good. And I think again, it just carries this set to the number six spot. All right, moving into our top five, starting with number five, we have the tie bomber. This set at $65 is a really neat set. I think it is also pretty underrated. I don't see many people talking about the TIE Bomber. And as I've had it, I've grown to love this set. I think this is a really neat TIE Bomber build. I don't really have anything bad to say about it. You get four minifigures in this set, which is pretty decent for $65. I do see a theme that most sets this year only got four minifigures ranging from the $50 price point all the way up to the $100 price point, which isn't great. Lego should include more minifigures in their Lego Star Wars sets. But I think that for $65, four minifigures isn't bad. I don't really mind this TIE Bomber set. I think it is pretty good and pretty underrated on the year. Next up at number four, we have the Executor Super Star Destroyer. I don't personally own this set. However, I think it looks really good. And at $70, I think it is worth it. It comes with the actual Executor Class Star Destroyer and it comes with the two smaller Star Destroyers on the side. It obviously comes with the 40 years of Return of the Jedi brick. And I think that this set is just really good. I've heard a lot of good things about this set. So I think number four is a good spot for it on this list. Next up at number three, we have the New Republic E-Wing versus Shin Hattie's Starfighter. I absolutely love this set. It costs $110, you're getting five minifigures, and you're getting two really good builds. I love the E-Wing build. I think it is really cool. It obviously has the landing gear, and I think it is just a really nice E-Wing build. And Shin Hattie's Starfighter, I also do really like. I think the value of this set is definitely there. At $110, you're getting two decently sized builds. I think the E-Wing could probably go for a solid $60 to $65, and then Shin Hattie's Starfighter could probably be a $50 set, knowing LEGO Star Wars prices today. So I think that overall, the value on this set is definitely there, and I really like the New Republic E-Wing versus Shin Hattie's Starfighter. Next up, at number two, we have the Ghost and Phantom 2. This set is really good. It's definitely the better of the two ghost builds that we have gotten in Lego. The Phantom 2 was a really neat inclusion in this set. I think that overall the interior space is really fun to play with. I think that this set does have its flaws for sure, but I think that overall as a ghost, for $160, Lego could have easily charged $170 for this set. I don't think anyone would mind, but at $160, the set is just even better value. I think five minifigures, they could have definitely done better. They could have definitely included one or two more minifigures in this set. But besides that, this is a really good set and probably the best play skill set that we have gotten this year. And then at number one, 
we have the Venator class Republic attack cruiser or the Venator class Star Destroyer. This set is amazing. The only flaw with this set are the minifigures, specifically the Captain Rex. If Captain Rex was a good minifigure, this set would be absolutely perfect. But the only thing perfect about this set is really the build. This build is amazing. I really love the way that they built the Venator class Star Destroyer. I think it looks really good. Again, the Captain Rex minifigure could have definitely been a little bit better, but besides that, this set is really good. And in my opinion, the best set to come out of the year 2023. Anyway, guys, that is it for this video. Let me know what you think of my list down in the comments section below. And also let me know what your favorite set of 2023 was as well. Thank you guys for watching this video. Drop a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel for more rankings just like this one. I will be back in 2024 since this is my last video of 2023. We'll have tons more content coming up about all of the LEGO Star Wars sets coming out this year. And I'll be back at the end of the year once again to rank all of the 2024 LEGO Star Wars sets that will come out within this next year. So, that is it. I will see you all in the next one. Bye.